bookending the narrative of Washington Irving's famed short story Rip Van Winkle are brief declarations by the fictional amateur historian Diedrich Knickerbocker, attesting to the absolute truth with various forms of proof to attest to the validity of the tale he is about to tell. The story Rip Van Winkle then opens with a vivid description of the Hudson River Valley and the story's setting in the Catskill Mountains. Rip Van Winkle lives near the Hudson in a small farming village around the year 1770. In the introduction, readers meet Rip Van Winkle, a simple, well-liked, good-natured guy, but he's meek, and he tries to avoid conflict at all costs. His wife, Dame Van Winkle, berates him constantly for his laziness. Rip is always willing to help out his neighbors, but he's against profitable labor, especially working on his own farm to earn money for his family. As a consequence, his children are ragged, and his wife is perpetually enraged by his indolence. In the rising action, his wife complains loudly and constantly about Rip's idleness and carelessness. Sometimes Rip leaves the village with his dog, Wolf, to fish in the Hudson or to hunt squirrels in the mountains. Or he escapes by sitting with his friends in front of the village inn. On this autumn day, Rip decides he's had enough of his wife's constant harping, so he grabs his rifle and walks off into the mountains with Wolf to find the peace and solitude he craves. As evening approaches, Rip decides it's time to head home. He's about to descend the mountain when he hears a voice calling his name. Wolf growls as Rip's name is called again. Rip spies a man climbing slowly up the mountain, carrying a large keg of liquor on his back. Rip is astonished at this stranger's old-fashioned Dutch clothing. The stranger gestures for Rip to help him carry the heavy keg, and Rip obliges. As they climb, Rip hears a deep, thunderous sound. When the two men reach an open space or amphitheater, Rip sees that the thunder is the sound of a group of men playing nine pins or bowling. These strange men are also dressed in extremely old Dutch style clothing. Rip finds the entire experience incomprehensible. But the men open the keg and pour the liquor into flagons or pitchers and offer some to Rip. Now Rip is a naturally thirsty soul. So he drinks glass after glass until he falls into a deep sleep. In the climax of the short story, Rip awakens in daylight. He looks around for his rifle, but sees only a rusted, ruined weapon next to him. He assumes the Dutchman played a trick on him. He calls for Wolf, but his dog is gone. And when he looks for the amphitheater, he finds the entrance to that is gone too. Rip stumbles toward his village, noticing people he doesn't recognize wearing oddly styled clothing. When Rip strokes his beard, he realizes it's grown incredibly long. The village is greatly changed, with familiar houses replaced by new ones. Rip finds his home decaying and empty, and his beloved inn replaced by the Union Hotel, which has a strange red and white striped flag flying in front of it. The former portrait of King George III has been replaced by a portrait labeled General Washington. Rip sees a man lecturing a group about citizens' rights and elections. Someone asks Rip who he's voting for, he doesn't understand the question and replies that he's a simple man and a loyal subject of the king. The crowd angrily calls him a Tory and accuses Rip of being a spy. A Tory was a supporter of the monarchy and the British during the Revolutionary War. Rip insists he's harmless and asks the crowd what happened to each of his old friends. Most are dead, some were killed in the war. Rip, heartbroken, asks, does nobody here know Rip Van Winkle? Someone in the crowd points out a lazy, ragged man over loafing by a tree. It's Rip Van Winkle Jr., Rip's now grown son. A young woman carrying a child approaches and identifies herself as Judith Gardiner and explains that Rip Van Winkle was her father who disappeared 20 years earlier. In the falling action, a bewildered Rip Van Winkle realizes he's been asleep for 20 years. Peter Vanderdonk, the oldest villager, is called for. He assures the crowd that strange disappearances in the mountains have happened before. He relates that the ghosts of Dutch explorer Hendrik Hudson and his men return to the Catskills every 20 years to guard their beloved river and to drink and play nine pins, which echoes like thunder throughout the mountains. The crowd seems to accept Rip's tale. In the resolution of the story, Rip remains and lives with his daughter's family, resuming his indolent habits and making friends with some of the townsfolk, living to gossip and telling the tale of his adventure to anyone who will take the time to listen. Imaginary historian Diedrich Knickerbocker implies that folk tales are an important part of a nation's history, even if the tales are not literally true. 
Critical analysis of Rip Van Winkle may view the tale as a sort of allegory for the Revolutionary War, in which case Dame Van Winkle and her constant demands may represent the demands made upon the American colonies by the British government. Shifts toward political partisanship, mistrust, and boisterous commerce are questionable improvements in the community's way of life, and Irving's writing reveals nostalgia for the old times and a gentle critique of the new. In the story, magic is key. Even in the first sentence, the Catskills are referred to as fairy mountains, implying that they are the home of some type of magic or enchantment. Irving's magical plot, wherein Rip dozes through a war and the birth of a nation, allows him to draw dramatic allegorical relationships between the old and new town, nostalgia for the old ways, and bewilderment at the new. Five main characters inhabit the world of the unforgettable short story, Rip Van Winkle. The title character, Rip Van Winkle, is a kind, gentle, and generous man who's eager and willing to help his neighbors, but he also hates to work, especially on his own farm. He's well-liked by the others in the old village, but is insufferable to his nagging wife because he does not support his family by farming. Rip escapes the torment of his wife's complaints by sitting and talking with his group of friends or stealing off by himself, particularly to fish and hunt with his dog, Wolf. When his wife's nagging becomes intolerable, he climbs up into the mountains to find some peace and quiet. That's where he meets the stranger, follows him to where a group of mysterious figures play nine pins and drinks their liquor, which makes him fall asleep for 20 years. When Rip returns to the town he left, he's bewildered by the changes he sees. Dame Van Winkle is Rip's wife and the mother of his son and daughter. She is a terrible nag who makes Rip's life a misery. Because Rip hates to work on the farm, she's always berating him, and he's always running away to escape her nagging. She's a harsh, loud, and intolerant woman who speaks her mind when people do things she doesn't like. Whether she's just plain nasty or driven to her behavior by her husband's laziness, her ferocious nagging is what sends Rip on his fateful climb up in the mountain. The stranger is a man Rip sees up on the mountain. Dressed in old-fashioned Dutch clothes, he carries a keg of liquor up the mountainside to a group of men who are playing nine pins. The stranger signals to Rip to help him carry the keg, which Rip does. The stranger seems to be a member of explorer Hendrik Hudson's crew, maybe even a ghost. Hudson discovered and sailed up the river that is named after him. The Dutch folk in the story claim that Hudson and his crew return to the Catskills every 20 years to keep an eye on the river they discovered and love. In fact, the fancy-handed commander at the revelry site might be Hendrik Hudson. <laughs> Curious about the elderly stranger, Judith Gardiner approaches Rip when he's older and bewildered, having awakened in this new world, carrying a baby in her arms. Struck by the young woman's appearance and manner, Rip questions her about her parents and learns that Judith is, in fact, his now-grown daughter, and that it has been 20 years since he disappeared up the mountain with his rifle and his dog. She also has an infant named Rip. Peter Vanderdonk is a descendant of a historian of the same name. His ancestor had written an early account of the region's history, which Vanderdonk says confirms that Hendrik Hudson and his crew return there every 20 years to play at nine pins and revisit the river they discovered. There are two important symbols in the short story Rip Van Winkle the Catskill Mountains, and the Inn and Union Hotel. The Catskill Mountains represent mysterious, magical, or supernatural forces of change that affect human life. They are described as having magical hues and shapes, and as fairy mountains. The mountains provide refuge for Rip when he seeks to escape his wife and family responsibilities. The supernatural quality of the mountains is reinforced by the visitation of Hendrik Hudson's ghostly crew every 20 years, an enchantment that physically changes the mountains themselves. Mm. And the mountain's magical physical change reflects its ability to alter the flow of time and corresponds to the great changes that have occurred in the village. The Inn and Union Hotel in the village represents the idleness and rejection of profitable work that is the core of Rip's life. The other men who lays in front of the Inn also while away much of their time sitting and gossiping in the shade of a large tree. Thus, the Inn stands for laziness and unproductive lives. 
But when Rip returns to the town after his 20 year sleep, he immediately looks for the inn where he lazed away most of his earlier life and finds it's been replaced by the hotel, which is described as a place of bustling political and one assumes commercial activity. This hotel represents the new values of commerce, political engagement, and money making, a direct contrast to the inn it replaced. Freedom versus tyranny, constancy and change, volunteerism versus work for profit, history and fiction. For a short story, Rip Van Winkle is possessed by some powerful themes. Washington Irving conveys the theme of freedom versus tyranny throughout the story. Rip Van Winkle seeks nothing more than the freedom to be his kind, simple self and to live the idle life he wants to live. The most obvious tyrannical force constraining Rip's freedom is his wife, as she <sighs> nags him constantly and ferociously to work on their farm and support his family. Rip escapes her forms of tyranny by sitting and chatting with his friends, fishing in the Hudson River, or hunting in the Catskill Mountains. Rip rarely thinks about politics. Irving mentions that the early villagers are subjects of King George III, but that fact seems totally immaterial to their lives. So while other colonists may have viewed British dominion as tyranny, the characters in the beginning of the story never refer to it that way. Neither domestic nor civic responsibilities intrude on Rip's lifelong freedom. Irving develops the theme of constancy and change through the actions of his protagonist, who is the embodiment of constancy. Regardless of the vast changes that occur around him, he remains the same. He represents a kind of romantic figure of purity and freedom that persists no matter what upheavals are going on around him. The village itself represents dramatic change over time. The restful inn that Rip and his friends used to gather at becomes a bustling hotel. Not only is the village changed physically, but the nature of the inhabitants seems altered. The sleepy village of the old days is contrasted sharply with the crowded, politics-obsessed town of two decades huh? later. Volunteerism versus work for profit is a theme close to Rip Van Winkle's heart. He's happy to work, but only when he volunteers his labor to others. He does not willingly work oh. for his own or his family's profit or benefit. Though he freely helps his neighbors, he refuses to farm his own land that, if well tended, might yield a profit and a living for his family. Rip is the embodiment of early colonial tradition and its simple way of life before an increasingly intense focus on work for money and profit became a hallmark of the United States. History and fiction is a theme that opens and closes the narrative with the elaborate promise of Irving's made up narrator, Diedrich Knickerbocker, that the story represents historical fact. Irving wrote both fiction and well-researched history, and in Rip Van Winkle, he explores the divide between fact and fiction and the location of truth in both. He also examines the value of fiction as a complement to historical fact, 